Hello everyone, Tim and Game here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another one of my Dota 2 Beginners Hero Guides. And today I'm going to be focusing on a really, really fantastic, but also annoying mid-hero in Viper. Now, like I mentioned, Viper normally is a mid-hero, although sometimes you see him go safe lane. He is an agility ranged hero, so he's very, very useful damage dealer you know very tanky he can do a lot of work he's an excellent ganker and he's a very very strong lane presence and if you guys are new to dota and you perhaps haven't played mid before you know, viper is a very very good hero to get yourself into that mid lane because you know, when i first started dota i was playing with some guys who you know played a little bit more than me or you know were on the same level as me and we sort of experimenting i played a lot of support i played a lot of off lane and mid lane was something i didn't really play for uh, quite some time but then found viper and viper is a very good introductory hero to mid and the reason for this, I've touched on it already. He's an excellent lane presence. He really is phenomenal in lane. He can do a lot of work. He has a huge damage potential. He certainly benefits from some early levels, and I have no idea what this Faceless Void is doing. And he can transition into a very meaningful carry into the late game as long as you have some items. So, as always with Viper, let's start off with his skill build. The first ability has his Q is a attack called poison attack you know Viper is a poison hero he does damage over time and poison attack is one of his core abilities it starts off with a 600 range as you can see it lasts for two seconds each time you cast it it costs 20 mana so bear in mind you know Viper doesn't have the largest mana pool in the world to start with he only has 15 base intelligence at level one that's not a huge amount so you don't want to be leveling this up too early and spamming it crazily but when you go into the mid game it becomes a very very potent damage dealer and that's because it applies an attack and move slow to your enemy scaling from 10% up to 40% move slow and a 10 up to 40 attack slow so that's very very useful it stops your enemies from running away it stops them doing as much damage to you and the good thing is it also provides a little bit of damage over time starting at 10 scaling up to 28 as you can see for a total damage starting up at 20 scaling up to 56 damage at level 4 so this is very very useful like I mentioned it's excellent to stop people from running away if you're going one to one with an enemy carry you can apply this on him and the attack speed slow will help keep you alive and then the damage over time is really useful in harassing in lane very very standard ability very useful the second ability, which is the one I skilled at level 1, is Nether Toxin. Now, this is quite an unusual ability in that it gives you bonus damage based on how low the enemy opponent is you're attacking. So, at full HP, it will only give you a small amount of bonus damage, but the lower your opponent's health goes, the more bonus damage you can get. And the reason why you pick this up at level 1 is because it helps you with last hitting. As you can see, the base bonus damage scales from 2.5 up to 10, level 1 to 4, and the max bonus damage starts at 40 and scales up to 160. So, for example, let me explain this how it works. If the enemy is at 100% health to 80% health, it will do the base bonus level. If your opponent is at 20% to 0% health, it will do the max bonus damage. And the bonus damage is halved versus creeps and buildings. So this is why it's incredibly useful, because it can be used to help you last hit in lane. It can also be used to help you push and that's the great thing about Viper. You know, Viper is a very, very versatile mid-hero in that he's very good in lane. He can gank, he can push, and he can provide a lot of damage through his poison attacks, through poison sting, through nether toxin. That's a lot of potential damage he can deal, so that's pretty useful. And as you can see, I'm having a good time in lane here. If I just get up the last hits and denies, I'm the last hit leader by a comfortable way. I'm 16 and 9, and the Zeus in lane is 2 and 0. So you can see I'm absolutely dumping on this guy's face in lane at the moment. And this is the great thing about Viper. He is a hero who doesn't really lose a lane. You know, he's a hero who's very, very good against most other people. You know, He might not necessarily win the lane, but then again, he's not going to lose horribly. And when you get a matchup like this Zeus, you know, this Zeus has absolutely no chance in lane against me. You can just see there, I just ran up to high ground just to scare him off, keep him out of XP range. And look, he's only level 3, I'm already level 5. And yeah, he's in a little bit of harass on me, but he's already down to basically no mana now and I'm just standing on his high ground and he can do absolutely nothing to me here and it's basically a free farm lane for me already up to 23 and 12 again the Zeus is still on 2 and 0 so this has been an excellent start to the game for me and one of the reasons why Viper is so strong in lane is his third skill corrosive skin now this is a passive skill and I decided to get a few points in this early because as you can see Zeus his primary 
lane ability, Arc Lightning, is a very, very spammy magic spell. So he will try and fire that as often as possible. And the great thing about Nether Toxin and Corrosive Skin is... You can deal damage with the Nether Toxin. You always want one point, and that's to help you with the last hit in, like I mentioned. And then you can put the Corrosive Skin on because it has a range of benefits. And if you play Ability Draft and you see a Viper in the pool, try and get Corrosive Skin because Corrosive Skin is one of the best single abilities in Dota. It is incredibly, incredibly strong. Whenever any creep or enemy hero attacks you, they will have all of these negative abilities benefits applied to them. So they'll have a 20% slow at the moment, level 3. It starts off at 10% and scales up to 25, a very, very standard scaling. Just keep moving the camera back there. The attack slow scales from 10 up to 25. And the great thing is as well, not only does it provide damage, so if the Zeus hits me there, there you go, you can see the corrosive skin begin to hit him. It's damaging him. It's providing the move and attack speed slow. Now the damage scales from 10 up to 25. So, you know, it deals a total of 40 damage at level 1, scaling up to 100 damage at level 4. And you can see here, I'm just zoning this Zeus out, and that's the first blood secured. Really, really easy. And you just saw there, he kept on spamming attacks at me, he was wasting his mana, the corrosive skin was attacking him down, and as soon as I got a creep wave in a position where I could dive him, I just cast my ult on him and I ran at him. And the guy couldn't get away because of poison attack. Again, the move slow, the corrosive skin, move slow, attack slow. Nether Toxin gives me bonus damage, and I kill him really easily. And I'm already 35 14 in lane, and I get first blood, and I am absolutely flying. And I decide to go back to base at this point. You know, I am at about half health. There's no point messing around. Let's go back, and I'll just go back to player perspective while I'm talking here. See, I'm looking top because I'm going to be start ganking in a moment. You know, I've hit level 6, I'm already up to level 7. Now is the time where you start to gank. And the great thing about Viper is, like I mentioned, he has all of these moves and attack speed slow, so you can stop people from running away. And I get the TP, drop it in my stash. I very nearly TP back into base there, but I was trying to drag my phase boots in before I teleported. And now I'm going to go top and immediately get involved in this fight. And unfortunately, our face this void got a little bit ballsy, but here I come kill the anti-mage really really easily and look at this this is why the slow is so powerful heroes just can't escape from you and again zeus comes in he kills the wraith king but he's dead he's not getting away keep casting the slow on him and he's dead so i just pick up a triple kill in lane there i got a single kill mid immediately teleported top and got a triple kill top so now i am absolutely balling here Let's have a look at the net worth. I am already on 3,800 net worth. The net worth leader on the other team is 1,900. So I have double the net worth of the enemy's number one position seven minutes into the game. And this is just how strong Viper is. You know, he is absolutely huge. I'll leave the net worth up because it's a good you know, indicator of how well you're doing in the game. This is why Viper is so insanely powerful. Because I just absolutely ruined lane. And then I ganked top. Well, it wasn't really a gank. You know, there's not no subtlety in it. They were attacking our heroes top. I immediately teleported in once I got a bit of health in the fountain. And then just rushed. And we've already picked up a tower bot as well. So this is going very, very well. But... There's been so much action here, I haven't had much opportunity to talk about Viper's ultimate, which is Viper Strike. And Viper Strike is an exceptional ultimate, it's a huge damage dealer, and again, like most of Viper's abilities, it is also an attack and a move speed slow. So, it has a 500 cast range, it lasts for 5.1 seconds, and this is a very, very strange duration time, but I'll explain why. You know, it provides an attack and move speed slow of 40, 60, and 80, your percent for the move speed slow, and attack is just the base level, so it's just 80, the figure 80. And I'm considering diving here, but instead I'll just focus the Zeus down, and then I run away. Just nobody can lane against me at this point. I'm so, so far ahead, and now it's time for me to run back to base, because as you can see, there is a Bloodseeker on the enemy team. He can see me. He gets bonus move speed when enemy heroes are low. What skill is it? Is it Thirst? Yes, there we go. It's Thirst. So he he knows exactly where I am. And Zeus is about to respawn. Is he level 6 yet? No, he's not, which is useful. But at the time, I wasn't certain whether Zeus was level 6. As you guys know, if you've played against the Zeus before, his ultimate is a global ultimate. And it can possibly kill me. But like I mentioned, you know, don't forget, Corrosive Skin gives you magic resistance. You know, another fantastic thing about Corrosive Skin. 
it gives you magic resistance scaling up to 10 to 25 percent and the great thing is with the corrosive skin magic resistance it actually stacks with other forms of magic resistance so when you combine that with your hero's base magic resistance you're actually getting 32 and a half percent magic resistance at level one which is absolutely huge and again here we go top blood seeker is dead really easy i'm just trying to scare out the anti-mage here and zeus turns up for the party and i'm just like why am i running away i can so easily kill this guy it's just how easy was that you know i've dived past the tower on my own against a full creep wave and two heroes and i've lost about a third of my health which is just insane and i'm already beginning to regen some of that because of wraith king's Passive, there it is, Vampiric Aura, which gives everybody near him lifesteal, which is absolutely insanely good on a Viper. And I'm already up to 5k net worth. 5k net worth, 9 minutes and 53 seconds in. It's massive. But again, there's been so much action in this game, and this is the real strength of Viper. You know, I've already got 7 kills at the 10 minute mark. 7 kills, that's a huge amount. But again, let's go back to Viper Strike. Like I mentioned, 5.1 second duration. The reason why it's that, it's because it applies the slow on a hero before the projectile hits. So you saw there, I launched my Viper Strike. The slow was applied to the Warlock before the projectile hit. So that's what that point one is. And then after that point, you get the standard. And I'm running back here, hoping... Zeus could have ulted me here. Did he have his... No, he doesn't have his ult. He's still not level 6. 10 minutes into the game, he's still not level 6. That just goes to show how much I've absolutely murdered him in lane. Now, I should be dead here, but again, because I won lane so hard, I survive and I get back to base, and this is really, really important. But the damage Viper Strike can do is pretty huge. It lasts for 5 seconds, the damage. Starting DPS is 60, scaling up to 145. So... At level 1, it does 300 damage. At level 2, it does 500 damage. And at level 3, it does 725 damage over time. Which is a huge amount. If you look at the heroes on the enemy team, 701 damage. Health, sorry, 720 health. 967 health. 663 health. 796 health. So I'm doing the vast majority of their health in damage already. And there we go. Bloodseekers dive in the tower. Ult him. Attack him, I get ruptured, but there's absolutely no problem, and I'm already up to 9 kills. I've got a godlike streak 11 minutes into a game, and I am just wrecking shop here with this Viper. It's going incredibly, incredibly well. And now I've had an opportunity to run through all of the skills and what their uses are. That was just a... I'm actually stunned at how bad that blink was from Anti-Mage. That took some work to be that bad. That was cracking work. He ulted Wraith King when he was on full mana. Which, if you don't know how anti-mage works, you know, let's have a look. Where is he? There's the dead guy. Mana Void does more damage the less mana he has. So, when you ult somebody on pretty much full mana, they tend to survive, which is a little bit of a problem. The Zeus ult actually just pops Wraith King's ultimate there, so he's still alive and he gets back to base on full HP. Very, very nice. And at this point, I'm building up into my second item, because very, very early game... I always like to go Ring of Aquila Treads on Viper. And the reason why, like I mentioned, Viper doesn't have a huge amount of mana. As I'm going to... I probably should have dove this wall up there. If I would have ulted him, he would have died. I'm not sure why I did. I'm a little bit conservative there. I probably should have got another kill. But you know, bearing in mind, I am a godlike streak. That's a lot of gold. I don't want to throw that gold away unnecessarily. A lot of heroes on the map missing there. If I had dive past the tower and there were two heroes there, I was very, very dead. And if I give that gold to an anti-major or blood seeker or an extra profit, that's a problem. So in hindsight, looking at the replay, I should definitely have dived in. But it was one of those things. At the time in the game, I was a little bit unsure whether that was the right thing to do. So at this stage, play a little bit cautious. You don't need to go silly throwing your advantage away you can just take smart fights and continue to get kills and again here we go this is a much smarter fight put the slow on the anti-mage he's gone a chronosphere here we go and that's a perfect chronosphere and then i can just wail on them from outside and these are two dead heroes he gets the rng bash but i throw the ultimate out on anti-mage just to guarantee the kill and this is now a problem pop my drums to run away I, why did I turn around there? I was trying desperately to save the lion, but lion's just completely dead. And now I'm in a massive problem. Again, there's so much action, I'm having trouble actually talking about my item builds. Like I mentioned earlier, Bloodseeker can see 
me on the map because of his thirst ability. So he knows I'm here. Yeah, I tried desperately to, to nudge back to the tower and he silenced me here, which is really unfortunate. Otherwise, I definitely would have killed him first. But fortunately, he still dies. So you saw there, I gave 1,300 gold up to that Bloodseeker. But fortunately, I managed to get the kill. So we lost some of that. It's not the end of the world. But... That was a little bit unfortunate. We went a little bit too deep there. We got the two kills early and then we should have just booked it straight away. We stuck around. I turned around at the wrong time. But as soon as I was under that tower, I was under huge, huge trouble. Because Bloodseeker knew exactly where I was. My only hope there was to stay under the tower. And hopefully something like that happened where I got the kill. And Warlock gets a tower out of that as well. So that was a little bit of a bad start. But as you can see, I'm still so far ahead in the net worth. Once I clear the scoreboard out of the way, there we go. I'm still 6,700 net worth. Their highest is a Warlock, which for them is absolutely terrifying when they have their carry. Two of their carries at the bottom and their mid player on 1,600. Our fifth position, Lion, has more farm than their mid Zeus, which just goes to show how hard I ruined his life in mid. Which just again, Zeus is not a great matchup for Viper. You can just kill Zeus again and again. If you see Viper go mid, do not pick a Zeus against him, because chances are he's going to die. Uh, easy kill nature's profit poison him down zeus is gonna die again easy peasy got the double kill there unfortunately faceless void dies in another lane but not the end of the world again we pick up more kills we kill their nature's profit he's gone hand of midas so we need to punish him and regularly kill him the longer we can keep him down the much better chance we have to win because super late game they will probably carry this because a six-slotted Nature's Prophet and a six-slotted Anti-Mage does a lot more damage than the six-slotted Viper. Although we do have PL Faceless Void Wraith King, so we probably had this late game as well. But you don't want to take any chances. Nature's Prophet is a super, super obnoxious hero to have to deal with. You do not want to have to bother with him at all with his split push, his general annoyance. And there we go. I pop my drums to stay in range of the Warlock. And that silence again. Ugh. I was greedy with my ult there. I should have ulted him straight away and guaranteed myself a kill. But initially, I was just playing a little bit defensive, just trying to keep the lion alive. And I was like, hang on, I can kill these guys again. Why am I not trying to kill them? Went aggressive. I should have just ulted him straight away. Just throw that ult out. Don't be greedy with it. Now, I could have had another couple of kills here had I just played a little bit more aggressive. There we go. We see him. And what a fantastic chronosphere that is. He chronospheres me in. I get hit under the tower, and then fortunately, because I'm so far ahead at this point, I can manage to man mode up and get a couple of kills before I die. But Faceless Void absolutely boned me there. That was a terrible, terrible chronosphere. Absolutely terrible. I wasn't very happy with that, as you can probably tell. That was just unnecessarily bad. But he makes up for it. Yeah, he had a good one in lane earlier and he does some decent work later. So I'm not going to be too harsh on the lad. But that was an unnecessary death. I would not have died there had he not chronoed me. Because I would have been able to man mode the enemy heroes down pretty quickly. You know, he would have been able to then chrono the tower to keep me alive if he had to. You know, If you're going to chronosphere that, at least get the tower in it so the tower doesn't start beating me up. But he got the absolute perfect amalgamation of terrible people to get in that. He got me, he didn't get the tower, and he didn't manage to kill anyone because he's got no damage at this stage. Have a look at his items. He's got Mask of Madness and the Quelling Blade, so he basically tickles people at the moment. No damage at all, which is a little bit unfortunate. So, that was a, a bit of a, a bad moment, a necessary death, but I'm still really, really farmed. And finally, hopefully there'll be a little bit of a lull in the action for a bit so I can talk about the item builds. And there we go. Like I mentioned, I always like to go Ring of Aquila, on Viper because it just fills a lot of things, gives you a little bit of extra damage, gives you a few attributes, gives you some agility, ex you know, some extra agility, so it improves your attack speed, which is very, very nice. It also gives you bonus armor, you know, aura bonus armor, and it gives you mana regen, which is very, very nice. Like I mentioned, you know, you've got your poison attack, you've got your the ultimate, the ultimate costs 250 mana at max level. It's nice to have a little bit of mana regen. You don't need to go overboard, but it's always nice to have a, at least a Ring of Aquila just to keep your mana tucked up. So that's that's quite a nice little amount of mana. After the Ring of Aquila, I've decided to go Drums. And Drums is very, very useful. You know, drums is rarely a bad item choice. It's just a very well-rounded item. It does a lot of good work for you. It provides you, like I mentioned, all the attributes. You get plus nine to all of them. It gives you three damage. It gives you aura attack speed and move speed. And don't forget, 
Who am I up against in this game? I'm up against Anti-Mage, who's a blink hero, and I'm up against Bloodseeker, who gains bonus move speed every time an enemy hero gets low. And I, I teleport in top here to join this fight. And here we go. Mech people to keep them alive, and they overextend top tower, and we get a lot of kills there, which is very, very useful. When you're up against a blink hero or a bloodseeker, going drums is nice, because that bonus move speed you get when you pop like you see i pop the drums there to try and close this warlock down unfortunately it doesn't happen but that's the the idea it provides you a little bit of move speed provides you a little bit of extra damage it provides you some nice attributes it tanks you up again a little bit of extra mana a bit more agility for some damage and attack speed a bit more armor very very nice it's just a good all-round item and it's quite cheap as well you don't need to spend a lot of money on drums to get a nice amount of return for it and that's a defensive rock and this guy, he's still going to die. <laughs> you know, he, he drops the Aghanim Scepter ultimate. And that's not a bad chrono. At least he didn't capture me there, which is a bonus. Gets the RNG bash again. And that's a dead nature's profit. That's a very, very ballsy mana drain from that lion there. With two massive golems about to punch him in the chops. Again, pop the jump charge again so we can run away from the golems. We're all going to get out alive. Unfortunately, lion turns around there. Not sure what he was doing there. Oh, well. And at this point, I'm debating turning back in. But fortunately, everybody's managed to disengage at this point. And I teleport bottom to stop this anti-mage from attacking this tower. So... Where did he blink to? Oh, he blinked north. There we go. I was considering chasing this guy into lane, but that was a smart blink from him. He blinked away, got away, and he's to safety now. Once you've got your drums, the good thing to do on Viper is just to go tanky. So I've got my phase boots. Again, phase boots for the move speed, the extra damage. You could go treads. Treads is very, very good on Viper as well because of that bonus attack speed. And I, I ping out... Void here. This is why I'm looking at Void. I'm like, dude, Bloodseeker can see you. They know you are there. They know you are really low. You are going to get ganked. I spammed pings at him, and he didn't even pay attention, and now he's dead. You know, actually, does he get away? I can't remember if he gets away. He gets bailed out. He's so lucky. That's fortunate because the rest of the team was paying attention, not the faceless Void. So, can Lion get the hex off? Nah, he's got away. So we do manage to save the Void there. But you've got to pay attention. You know, Bloodseeker is a hero who absolutely mullers pleb tier players. You know, when you're in the trench, you get people who play Pudge every game, and you get people who pick Bloodseeker every game. And that's because people are not aware of what Bloodseeker does. They are just AFK farming in the jungle at 40% HP, and they don't remember that Bloodseeker can see them. And so they get ganked like that. Unfortunately, the rest of the team are alive to the danger and managed to save his ass. But you don't want to risk that at all. Just don't, don't risk it. <laughs> Bloodseeker is an incredibly annoying hero. Learn what his strengths are and learn what he does. And if you can do that, he's easily counterable. And you see, you know, this is the perfect hero to deal with Bloodseeker because I'm a ranged hero. I have movement speed slows and attack speed slows, so I can stop a lot of his damage dealing and I can stop his ability just to chase heroes down, keep some of my guys alive. Very useful. And then after that, partially to keep people alive again, but to the tank thing, like I was mentioning, go Mechanism. Mechanism, active ability, restores 250 HP and gives bonus armor in all areas, but it also gives you bonus HP regen. So your HP regen really just go through the roof, and this is what you need to do on Viper. You need to tank up. You know, tanking up is definitely the best thing to do, because like I mentioned, you already get bonus magic resistance from corrosive skin so once you've got your four points in corrosive skin then you go hp and once you've got hp then you can go back and decide whether you want to go damage or survivability and at this point i'm a long long way ahead as you can see eleven thousand net worth to just under eight thousand for the nature's profit i'm going to go black king bar and the reason why i wanted to go black king bar in this game is because they have a huge amount of magic damage. You've got a Zeus in the game. He's finally hit level 11, so he's already getting his level 2 ultimate. He's got a lot of magic spam. And as you can see, that he's been targeting me most of the times with his magic damage. We've got Anti-Mage as well. He has a Mana Burn. Where am I looking? Mana Break. There it is. Magic Resistance actually does stop this Mana Break. And again, that ultimate, he must realise, you know, having played hopefully more than one game of Anti-Mage, that you can't do that. And Wraith King rightly just punches him in the face there. It's just not particularly bright. And there's a four-man chronosphere, which is nice. And again, he doesn't get me in the chronosphere. If you don't get me in this chronosphere, I am going to kill fools. 
And unfortunately, Prophet gets away, but we do pick up the Warlock. And we're going to kill these Golems here as well, which is nice for some extra gold. There we go. They give 75 gold each, which is quite nice. Spread that around. Mech everybody up and go away. And you know, this is the good thing about Viper. He's so, so good at pushing. And once you get a little bit of HP regen, I get earned up by the Lion there. Really, really nice. I've got the Aquila for that little bit of mana regen. See, my ult's up now again. I've got 450 mana ready to use. My Nether Toxin means I do more damage to the tower. I've just mech the wave up. I'm tanky because of my corrosive skin. Just you, you begin to see why Viper is so incredibly, incredibly strong if he gets a little bit of a head start. And at this point, like I said, I went black for the Black King Bar to block all the Zeus's nukes, to block the golem damage a little bit, to stop the mana break, and just to stop Anti-Mage from ruining my world. Because Anti-Mage is a decent counter to Viper, because like I mentioned, he doesn't have the highest mana pool in the world. He doesn't have particularly great intelligence gain. It's two per level. It's not, you know... Actually, that's not wrong. I read that wrong. It's 1.8 per level. There we go. Not bad. Not bad, but not amazing. So if you get anti-mage blink on you with a manta style and mana break you, you're in a lot of problems. So having the BKB is quite nice. And then after this, you can go damage. And I decided to go butterfly. Your butterfly is a very, very useful item. It gives you a stack of agility, so you get armor damage. He gets the RNG bash, but he's gonna shadow blade away there. Unfortunately, I couldn't get my attack off in time. Didn't realize he had a shadow blade at that point, so. Unfortunately, we missed out on that kill, but again, we protected the tower, which is the main thing. The last thing you want in this situation is the enemy team to get free gold. We are so far ahead. We are really, really far ahead. Let's have a look at the XP graph. 15,000 XP ahead. We are pretty much 13,000 gold ahead. That is a huge margin. We do not want them to get free towers, and this is another thing you see at low levels. You get people take towers for free. Buy a teleport scroll. Buy a teleport scroll. It is definitely worth teleporting two heroes in to defend the tower. 100%. Because you are giving up over a thousand gold to the enemy team if you let them have that tower for free. You can't afford that. Because if Profit starts to split push, if Profit gets a few items, if he gets that last hit on the tower and he gets a substantial gold boost, that could be the difference between him having a Desolator in the next fight or having a Hex in the next fight. And not, and I furiously ping out the ring of regen there, not the ring of regen, sorry, the regeneration rune, there we go. But unfortunately, Wraith King gets ruptured. I'm desperately trying to apply the slow to keep Wraith King alive. He doesn't have his ultimate, his ultimate just came off cooldown there, which is really, really problematic. I should have popped my BKB there, but I wasn't expecting to get rocked by Warlock, unfortunately. So again, hindsight, should have popped the BKB. It's not the end of the world, because again, look at who gets my gold. It's a warlock. This is not the end of the world. If I kept giving up godlike streaks or big streaks to the anti-mage or the bloodseeker, that might be a little bit more problematic. But the warlock, yeah, he's annoying. If he gets refresher up, that might be a problem. He's already got his Aghanim Scepter, and now he's got nearly 2k gold on top of that. But that's not the end of the world. You know, it's much better to, for him to get an Aghanim Scepter than it is for an Anti-Mage to get his Battle Fury and get his Manta style up. And just look how far behind he is. He went Vlad's first, which is just dreadful, and he still hasn't even got his Battle Fury 27 minutes into the game. You know, a decent, not even a good time, and a decent Battle Fury time is 16 minutes. You can get it a lot faster if you have a great start. He still hasn't got it 27 minutes in, so that's just how far we've kept this Anti-Mage down. And again, look at the Bloodseeker as well. 27 minutes in, he has got a Yasha and a Belt of Strength, and that is it. Compare that to me. Yeah, I have got... Please click on me. Oh, this is the problem where I'm clicking on the Wraith King now instead of looking at myself. There we go. I've got a BKB, I've got a Mechanism, I've got Drums, I've got Phase, I've got my Eagle Song already, and I am nearly at my completed Butterfly. 27 minutes in. So, that is the difference. I am 10,000 net worth ahead of the Bloodseeker. 10,000. That is a massive amount of gold for 27 minutes. That is a huge amount of gold. But going back to Butterfly, uh, the reason why Butterfly is really, really good in this situation, the reason why I chose it, is because look at what they've got. The enemy team has a lot of magic damage. They've got the Zeus, they've got the Warlock, they've got the anti-mage is mana break, that's why I've gone the BKB. BKB also gives you some strength, so you tank yourself up a little bit as well. Pure HP is always nice. Again, Prophet's pushing the tower, teleport him. Doesn't matter. I know I can't kill him because I don't have detection, but I scare him off. I prevent him from getting that free tower damage and free tower kill. Defend the towers. Definitely defend the towers. 100% worth defending a tower to stop them from getting gold. You know, building the butterfly now. 
I've already got the raw HP from the mech and from the Black King bar. I've got the magic resistance from corrosive skin and again the Black King bar. Now I'm going to get the evasion for the butterfly to deal with their incoming physical damage. So I am going to be basically unkillable for them now. Because if they throw everything at me, all I do is I pop my BKB and then they can't kill me. They basically cannot kill me at this point with my items that I'm going to be having. So at this point, I can see a couple of heroes on the map. I can see two bottom with the creeps. I can see one mid. I know that they're not really going to be able to kill me. I've got oh, phase boots to get away. Even if Bloodseeker comes up and ruptures me, I can just turn and man mode him. And don't forget, one thing you've got to remember about Bloodseeker, it is damage over time. It is HP removal. It is not magic damage. So BKB does not stop rupture. You've seen I've seen many people pop BKB and run away and kill themselves. That's not sensible. <laughs> Don't do that. So turn and fight him. Never ever ever try to run away from the Bloodseeker if you've been ruptured. The amount of people I see suicide themselves, it's just it's come on guys. You know, Bloodseeker is picked quite a lot. You know, he's a very, very pub stumpy hero. You see a lot of people pick him. Understand what his abilities are. Press the S key to stand still. Quite, you know, sensible really. Again, it's a nice hex. I keep getting cock blocked by the lion there. But I just pop my BKB, just running them down. Another kill for Wraith King here, and this anti mage is very, very dead. See, look at the slow. He blinks, but he's moving so slowly because of my poison, he can't get away. And this is again why I've gone for the move speed build. That's why I've gone for the phase boots, the drums of endurance, because I can put the slow on him, and then even if he blinks away, I can still just run him down. He's not getting away. And again, mech everybody up. I'm at full HP. I dived their tier 3s against 3 heroes, I got focused by 3 of them, I got the rock dropped on me, and I have full HP. And now I'm ready to push again, I've got enough mana for my ultimate and some right clicks with the poison attack. You know, ruining face, I've got my butterfly on the courier, I've got 1.8k gold after this. You know, this is GG, there's no way they can defend this push anymore, we can take this tower for free. And another rack, so they pop glyph here, but even if they all respawn... Warlock's used his ultimate. Zeus hasn't got his ultimate. What are they going to do? And I realised that I was just like, hang on, let's just right click these guys. But we do back up and again, we're playing safe. We're saying Roshan now. now. In this scenario, it is always better to play safe. It's always better to go back, pick up the Roshan and then go in and push with Doom. We've got all of our cooldowns up now. We've got Chronosphere up. We've got Viper Strike up. We've got Wraith King's ultimate up. We've got Finger of Death up. Kill the Roshan. Put it on a hero, go in and kill. They can't kill me at this point, so there's no point me having it. Give it to the Faceless Void, give it to the Wraith King, either would work. Let's have a look at what the Faceless Void's got. Faceless Void, again, he's going Butterfly, he hasn't gone BKB, he's gone the fun build where you just go damage. Yeah, that's fine. Have a look at the Wraith King. He's got Desolator, he's building an Assault Curious, he's got his armlet, he's now got the Aegis. You're not killing him three times, it's just not happening. And they can't, they can't even kill me once. So they're not going to kill Wraith King three times. And PL, let's have a look at Phantom Lancer here. He's got his Diffusal. He's got his Manta. We've got enough items to win this game. And we catch this Anti-Mage here. Fortunately for him, he just about breaks the combat by blinking away. Here's the Nature's Prophet split pushing. And um, I just call out in chat. Let's just GG this. Prophet will be able to get a Rax out of this. But just look, I get ruptured. I just stand still. It's like, okay. If you want to rupture me, I will just kill your barracks. I'll wait for the rupture to end, and then I'm going to join the fight here. You know, super easy. Got my butterfly now, and let's just watch this fight here. Just look how fast these guys die. And then we just go for the mid towers, and we go for the, the tier fours, and just to end the game. Look at Nature's Prophet. He's still split pushing here. He's not going to be able to do anything. So I just pop the mech, stand out of range of the second tower. See, we're just having a look. There's no way he can base race us in this scenario. Prophet is not farmed enough. He's not farmed enough. We absolutely black the Warlock down again. And down goes the tower. And the item I would have built next, and the item I'm currently building, just about to get, is an Aghanim Scepter. An Aghanim Scepter is absolutely fantastic on Viper. It's one of the best Aghanim Scepter upgrades in the game. Right, I'm just going to talk about this a little bit now the game's over. But let's have a look at this, the final score cam. 25-3-6. Absolutely mullered them. Absolutely mullered them. Just such a dominant display. Viper, he's such a massive lane presence. Just stomps his lane. Then he can gank, he can push. He's good in team fights because of the corrosive skin. If you're up against any AoE damage, you just 
hit everybody with corrosive skin it's a really really powerful ability and as you see here it leads to very very successful games but quickly mentioning Aghanim Scepter before you know we get this game over with and that's not actually my curse there it's the other guys great thing about Aghanim Scepter it reduces the mana requirement to 125 which is very very low that's the level one cost at level three it costs 250 so knocking it back down to 125 is useful but the great thing about it it knocks it down to a 12 second cooldown 12 seconds which is just ridiculous and bear in mind at level three it does 725 damage 725 damage and it provides an attack and move speed slow that's huge that is absolutely huge so in some scenarios you can conceivably ult three times in the team fight with Aghanim Scepter and don't forget with Ags it gives you a bit of health it gives you some mana it gives you some agility some strength some intelligence very very nicely rounded item and it is a huge damage increase for Viper it really really is so just to finish off on Viper early game little bit of mana regen you don't need to go overboard you know if you go a quill of drums that's plenty that's fine especially if you're going to go agonim scepter later which will give you even more mana and it will reduce the requirement that you'll need for your ultimate you don't need any more mana than that after that mechanism is a great item on him again you don't have a massive mana requirement but you have a reasonably sized mana pool so you can get your mech off quite reliably every fight it gives you some hp bit of armor tanks you up again aquila gives you a bit of armor tanks you up after that go eggs go damage Butterfly is a good choice. BKB if you're up against a lot of magic resistance. And then you just go DPS. You can go MKB. You can go Manta. If you wanted to push more, Manta style is a great pushing item. Because we were involved in a lot of team fights and I wanted the evasion and the, the actual damage output, I went for the Butterfly. And then Aghanim Scepter would have been a good choice. But I could have gone Ags first if I really wanted. But I just got, I was so far ahead and I had the gold required to just one click the Eagle Song. I thought, yeah, whatever. And I just went from there. But... When you're that far ahead, you have the flexibility to go at a number of different ways with Viper. It's always good to build him for the early game. You want to go out there, you want to make yourself felt early, gank early, get kills, then you snowball. And when you snowball as Viper, you are you get to the point where you're unkillable. And you saw that game, I was actually unkillable. They couldn't kill me. Even if they threw everything on me, I would just BKB. And then I'd met myself up to avoid the physical damage and I had evasion from the butterfly and I would just right click them all down. It just, it was impossible. I would have to dive solo against their entire team under towers for them to kill me. That's just how far ahead I was. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And I really hope you try Viper out because he's a fantastic hero and he's very, very forgiving and he can do a huge amount of work once you understand how he works. But please don't play him in the game against me. But once again, thank you so, so much for watching. And as always, 